Well, hello there, and welcome to the Brecon Beacons. Hello and welcome to the Brecon Beacons. This is my second video. Tonight we're going to do some star trails. So I thought I'd just show you exactly how I uh, focus at night. Now it was only when I was editing this video that I noticed that for some reason I was whispering. Like I was going to disturb someone in the middle of nowhere. Honestly this place is about a few miles away from anything so i'm not sure who i thought i was going to bloody disturb you know maybe you know some mad local that could hear me from like five miles away i'm really not sure but there we go or maybe it was a murderer it was someone out there with an axe or a shovel or a gun <coughs> I'm not sure whether I can go back out there to be honest. This might be the second video of the very last videos to be honest. Anyway. I put on the brightest star that I possibly can. Uh, I'll then zoom in. If I can hit the right button. <laughs> I'll zoom in as far as I can. And then I'll manually, manually get the star into focus. as pinpoint as I possibly can. And there we go. So what I usually do is that I will scout my location beforehand. Um, that means I'll come up in the daytime, um, I'll use different kind of apps to figure out where the stars are, where the Milky Way is, and to try and compose my shot and figure out what composition that I want in that shot. So at least then when I come there later on in the evening, um, you know, I, I have a general idea of exactly what I want and how I envisage it to be. So I'll usually set up um, my camera, which is the Canon 5D Mark IV. I've got a battery grip installed on it. So that gives me the added usefulness of having two batteries in line. I will usually set up the inbuilt uh, intervalometer um, and have that shooting then over a long period of time. This gives me the added benefit of being able to use all of these photos for three different things. Firstly, I'm able to use the photographs for a time lapse. Secondly, I'm able to stack these images together to give me a much clearer photo of the night sky and thirdly i'm able to make a star trail i won't lie to you it is bloody freezing up here very 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 cold i know obviously you can't see the stars behind me because of the light but orion behind me is absolutely superb here's a photo that i took earlier on just after I focused the camera. So back in the car now, uh, I won't lie to you, it is, it is just pretty, pretty cold outside, to be honest. Um, we're hitting about minus three now. So I just got back in the car really, just to keep nice and warm. I'm quite lucky that the location here is just off this side of the road. 
to be honest, a little pull in. Um, it's, it's a great location. So tonight nearly went drastically wrong for me. I'd already connected my battery grip to my 5D and then went on to realize that I wasn't able to then connect that to my tripod. I thought that I'd forgotten my Arca Swiss plate. I hadn't because I always store it within my rucksack. But I think it's just another example that, you know, to myself that I always need to check. I've got everything I need because to be honest, I nearly kind of wrapped up and, you know, drove the 40 miles back home again. Go through your kit. Make sure that you've got everything you possibly need for that shoot for that night. Because once you're out here, you can't do anything about it. You know, you'll you'll have to make do with whatever you've got somehow. You know. I've been here now for a few hours. Uh, I'm gonna probably be here for about another hour again, uh, providing I don't get too cold. Of course, I don't want to get too cold. Uh, another coffee might be on the cards. To be honest, I would I would partake in another coffee. I I won't lie to you. I I probably would. I probably will. I am freezing. I am really, really cold now. So, also, wear warm clothes. Don't be a complete dick like me tonight. Wear warm clothes. <laughs>